Good afternoon. Welcome to the Friday live stream for October 2nd, 2020. Um, so happy to see you all. Um, hope you're having uh, a good Friday and looking forward to the end of your, your week, although I'm sure it seems like it never ends. Um, last week, I wasn't here, and George and Celia added a little, um, like, we are in control. Well, just so you all know, I have returned. So there you are. Dark side, <laughs> back to control. So <clears throat> uh, just as a reminder, thank you all. You have become very good at this. We'll probably drop this reminder out. But um, all questions, um, EdTech related, can go to edtechatalsaw.org. That way they don't get stuck in somebody's inbox who can't be checking their email at any given moment. Um, last week, we had a reminder about some new Google Meet features. Uh, not a reminder, but an, an announcement about some new Google Meet features. Um, these are in the gear, the settings. Uh, we just wanted to remind some of you uh, were letting us know I'm seeing them sometimes and I'm not seeing them other times. These are organizer or meeting owner controls only. So um, if you are not the meeting organizer, you will not see them. You only see them when you're the organizer. But we have another update. Um, and this may become a theme through October and the rest of the of the calendar year. Um, so there is uh, another update. These will, whereas the updates from last week were teacher-only updates or organizer-only updates, these will be available to anyone in a Google Meet. So you can see that there are three things there. And if you don't have them now, remember all Google updates roll out over a 15-day span, so you will have it soon, um, is uh, there are now, you can start a, a Jamboard, a whiteboard automatically right in the middle of the Meet. Um, once you open it up, a link drops into the chat and will be accessible, editable by everyone in the chat. Um, where it says change layout, the native, you know, before the tiled view or the native, the Google version of GridView only supported up to 16. Now it can go up to 49 people. So you don't necessarily need the GridView um, Chrome extension. Uh, but the reason we wanted to give you the heads up is, again, available for all. So our students will be able, if they find this, um, and we know that they are incredibly resourceful and just just as curious as, cat, as cats, um, they will find it. And uh, it's not really a big deal, um, but they will. So without the Chrome extension, you can now turn your tiled view or gallery view up to um, 49. And then this last feature is a bit of a privacy feature. And we're hoping that this will mitigate some people feeling like they don't want to be on camera. So let's go ahead and talk about it. It's background blur. Um, so black round bur background blur, blah, 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 um, you can see takes it from this to this. Um, and I can, I can change it, it right now. And by turning on my background blur, you can see that my um, sort of messy office kind of goes away and it's a nice sort of blurred thing gives people um you know we know that our students are in often uh, pretty crowded homes and apartments and this gives them a way um to sort of block block out the details of what's happening in the background um and when we go back and think about that our students will now get a larger tiled view if they go into that then this might become um a thing that we need to say, hey, turn your back, your your blur on, so you know people don't get distracted by what you're seeing. As you can see, it moves around. It's it's pretty good at tracking, but you know it's not it's not perfect, right? Um, it's not the same as virtual background, but you know uh, those aren't perfect either. In any case, all right. So we're on to uh, it's first Friday, so that means um, Ed Services Q and A. Um, I would like to welcome all of our um, our special guests. I'm going to keep using this screen capture until they somebody yells at me and tells me I'm not allowed to do that anymore. Um, but I would like to especially welcome uh, doctors Gomez, Palmer, Hernandez, and Ratliff, um, which sounds like an East Salinas law firm, but it's actually the Ed Services uh, directors. Apparently, unless you're the Ed Tech director, you had to be a doctor to get into this Friday's meet. Um, so <laughs> before uh, we we get into that, um, would any of the directors, before we get into the actual questions and answers, do any of the directors have any announcements they'd like to make, whether it's a reinforcement of an email or a, a, any sort of preview before we get going with, with questions or, or any opening message? 
Any greetings or salutations? No? Okay, there's some of you. Of course, well, well, welcome, everyone. We are so happy. It's Friday. Thank God it's Friday. TGIF. So uh, more to come about uh, questions that are coming through that we may be able to respond. Thank you for your hard work. Thank you for all you do to support our students, our parents, and your colleagues. All right, colegas. Um, that all being said, Dr. Gomez. Yes, just good afternoon. I think we've just, uh, after today, we've completed week, uh, full week eight. So congratulations to you uh, at the sites and we're looking forward to continuing the, continuing the work and continuing improving our, our process as we, as we go through this year. So welcome, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, thank you very much. So, um, Hopefully, you know, I put out earlier when I made the announcement about what live stream was going to be this week, I did it a day early so that we could take some questions early. And it looks like we've got um, a couple of questions in the chat. Uh, George or Celia, would you care to kick us off? Yes. Um, first question is, um, actually, we've heard this even through um, the ed tech department, but um, maybe Dr. Hernandez, you can um, get this message out to everybody so there's clarification across the district. But the question is, um, last time that there was an Illuminate training, um, there was a trainer who showed them that with the click of a button, you can transfer students' grades from Google Classroom to Illuminate. And we're wondering, um, if and when that's going to be available to the district? Good, good question. And I know that there is uh, a desire out in our district to have integrated systems. Uh, there are some uh, requirements based on age that allow us to integrate the systems that we have in place. Uh, Google being one of them and Illuminate uh, coming together would require uh, different legal permissions. We're investigating uh, with uh, Illuminate what the requirements would be, as well as the Google Suite guidelines to be able to allow students uh, under 18 to access, or whether we would need to uh, execute additional parental consents uh, to be able to make that happen but we we don't have it happen it's not happening at this at this point but we are investigating the option to make it uh, a possibility for all thank you dr h for that um we have another question on here and maybe you might need to a couple of you might need to tag tag team this one it says uh when students are logged into accelerator reader they are able to see their cpd in english but not in spanish Will this feature be available in Spanish, especially for the lower grade uh, primary teachers? And then related to this, actually, this one's a little bit different. Do students have access to Achieve 3000 in Spanish for this school year? So two separate questions there. So I can answer uh, to the one related to uh, Renaissance. Uh, I don't necessarily oversee uh, Achieve 3000, but I can investigate about it as well. However, uh, when it comes to uh, Renaissance, the students will obtain a ZPD based on the language of the STAR test they take. So if they take STAR reading in English, then they'll obtain a CBD in English. If they take STAR test in Spanish, then they'll be able to obtain a ZPD in Spanish. So uh, depending on the grade level, they may be uh, required to take uh, one or, or another uh, or both, depending on the program placement also. So if you're in a bilingual setting where you have students who are doing language arts in both English and Spanish, then you may want to have them take start reading in English and start reading in Spanish. The only way you can have a ZPD in both languages is uh, resulting from start reading in either language. So you cannot have a ZPD. Uh, they're not the same. Uh, there are specific skills that are connected to each assessment and then they need they would need to be displayed separately so you cannot just obtain a zpd for english and spanish by administering one so you would have to administer both 
start reading in English or start reading in Spanish. The students have companion licenses. So every student in the district is uh, licensed or provisioned for start reading. And their start reading English license has a companion start reading Spanish license. So teachers can uh, have students take, if they want to have a ZPD in, in both languages, then they would have to have the students take both assessments. Thank you. And then uh, maybe you could get back to us about Achieve 3000 next I time. will. I will investigate with Ms. Hanso about it. Thank you. Um, I, I heard a rumor, so I might ask Dr. Gomez this question. <laughs> I heard you sent out a, a clarification email. I mean, I didn't see it. That's why I say rumor. But I heard it came from you. Um, the question is regarding uh, the funding for classroom libraries. And so this question is the money that we have for lending library, libraries. Is there a plan on how we're going to run that lending library? And this person's uh, concern is that uh, maybe classified is going to be um, like they're going to have one more thing to keep track of um, in terms of like some kind of protocol or procedure for that lending library. Um, so yeah, so I have uh, received uh, a couple of questions uh, related to to our lending library. So one of the one of the things I think we all agree on is that we want students to have actual books in their hands, and we have our uh, emergency funding that we can definitely use to help support that. So in terms of buying uh, books and packaging them. Uh, remember, our, our teachers really have to be aware of uh, independent reading levels so that students have access to some independent read, reading level books. So when checking those out or when sending those out, uh, one, of the, one of the ways that I've talked to a few of the principals is what do you currently have in place to send out materials? As you know, we're, we're sending home, uh, whether it's, it's kits, whether it's uh, uh, instructional materials that need to be sent home. Uh, tagging it along with that. So if you're, if the teacher in the class or that specific grade level is already sending um, a packet home, okay, let's, let's include the books here. And so there, there are a variety of ways in which that is being done at the school sites. Some, uh, there's boxes outside, there's uh, GLTs that are helping to support the distribution. Obviously, yes, we do have classified staff that is also helping uh, with some of that distribution. So I've been having conversations with school sites to see how we can uh, streamline the process. So again, when we lend books uh, to students, we do expect them to come back, but it's not necessarily come back in a week or come, you know, keep these six, seven, eight books for three, four weeks, and then we'll bring them back, leave those, you know, put them in a box, uh, uh, put them away, not, not, and then lay them out, not use them. So again, wanting to make sure that the safety protocol is in place. But um, again, it, uh, it will be a discussion that we'll have with site leaders, site principals, so that we're using a variety of, of methods that we're currently already, that we currently already have in place. So it doesn't not, it, it isn't necessarily all on one person. It's it's a team effort of how we're currently distributing uh, materials so that students have access to, to rich um, uh, literature. I hope that helps. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Gomez. All right. We have a couple of questions here that are related with regards to Illuminate. Number one has to do, and I think they're related, so I'm going to ask them all together. Number one uh, has to do with uh, where can I find the test in Illuminate to submit scores? And then related to that, I think, and this has been asked by a couple of people. Thank you, Ms. Lomax, for sending this. Um, when is, uh, is, you know, is Illuminate going to be cleaned out so that I can e more easily find the test that I really need from past years? And who can do this? So two questions there. Okay, so uh, I'll respond to the second part of it, which is uh, the cleanup. I will work on uh, eliminating those that are not uh, current uh, assignments uh, for teachers to not get lost in locating an assessment that is required of them. Uh, I need more clarification in terms of what it is that they are trying to enter at this point. Uh, we we only have BPSD that is required to be administered uh, online and live, and uh, but we have not set up a 
we don't have a setup for people to enter scores. The only other place we had that was for writing and math, but those are not at this point, and concepts of print, but those are not required at this point through Illuminate. So uh, I would need more clarification related to what other assessment they are trying to enter. If schools are administering their own writing metrics, which is now the requirement, we're not uh, sending out the district writing be benchmark, they may be asked to put it into Illuminate, but if they, but if I don't know what they are administering, then there's no way I can set up the sp a space for to a space for them to enter scores. So I would need that information now that that all schools have their own writing systems. So concepts of print is not there's no there's no setup there yet because it's not required until students come back in in person, and then writing is going to be contingent on. Uh, on how schools arrange for that based on their own writing plans. Otherwise, the rest of the assessments are automatic through uh, a live interaction with students uh, and presented through through uh, a summarized a summary assessment of sorts, especially in kinder with the BPST. Uh, thank you, Dr. H. And just for reference, I believe um, it is from Ms. Lomax, who's a kindergarten teacher, so it's probably regarding the BPST. So um, would it be okay if they if they have a certain question about that, they can email you. Yes, and I have been. Uh, I have actually modeled at a, at, at a couple of uh, at, in 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 a couple of classes precisely at MLK uh, how to go about administering the BPST if that were to be the case. So I'll be happy to follow up with her. Thank you. Um, this next question is about the report card. Um, so uh, this question is um, wondering how we're going to be reporting grades. So are we assigning uh, numerical grades, meaning like four, three, two, one, to show mastery on the report card this year? We are we are remaining. Uh, we have not changed the report card. I know there was a space on the report card related to writing, which is which still says. Uh, um, um, opinion uh, on the report card. We, if we were to just change that field, we would have to change all district, all sixteen setups for the report card, uh, TK through sixth grade in English and Spanish for that one adjustment. We are not going to make any adjustments to the report card until uh, we can come back in person to determine what adjustments are needed. So I will be communicating that to all. Uh, via email that the report card remains the same and you would basically uh, grade the students based on their participation and engagement. Uh, my recommendation is that that engagement that is recorded on the weekly engagement record is based on the daily uh, participation of students and that checking for understanding and not just a single assessment. So as a teacher, you would do a 4321 based on the level of uh, connection with, uh, with an assignment or with instruction and learning that's taking place daily. So there's no ch there, there will be no changes until uh, we have an opportunity to come back together and then bring a, a committee that can say, now that we are back in a normal normal, not, a, not in a distant normal, which is where we are right now, then we need to look at that again. To make changes right now would be inadequate when there are so many uh, adjustments made and so many options uh, considered uh, um, and implementations uh, from class to class. To add on to that question, um, another question came in from BRB about um, linking the gradebook and illuminate to the report card. And so the question is, is that um, is that function still going to be available this year like it has in the past? Yeah, that function is already uh, available. We had some glitches, but they're already uh, functional. I finalized the mapping of the fields uh, from the, the field groups onto the report card and I tested it with a few teachers and they actually showed me that the assignments and any assessments that they were administering through Illuminate, uh, for example, the flexible assessments that were shared a few weeks ago by one of the teachers that they used the flex assessments. I think she's gonna be presenting at ATC, that's Linda. 
in the Robert said, but I'm okay. Uh, those would link through the grade book and automatically aggregate onto the report card. So that function is already uh, executing properly. Okay. Thank you. Um, I don't know who will answer this next question. This has to do with a one-way uh, one uh, program, a bilingual program. And it says students have to take the, the, do students have to take the STAR early literacy test in English? I don't see it available in Spanish. The STAR literacy is available in English and in Spanish. So um, if you send me the name of the teacher that you can do a message to me, an email to me, I can follow up with that person. I am actually sending a message to all teachers so they can actually practice pretending being a student and taking a test uh, on any of our STAR products from Renaissance. So they can actually practice the experience students are experiencing when taking the test, including STAR literacy in English and Spanish. So yes, students have the option of taking it in English or Spanish. But I will follow up. If you send me an, an email to, uh, I'll follow up with that person to uh, ensure. And I'll make sure that I send a message to all about how that is available. Dr. Dr. H, you kind of said that um, you said that students have an option. So is that the teacher's description? Because this because this teacher seems to be asking, do they have uh, do they have to take it? And if so, where is it? That that was the question. So the STAR literacy is is provisioned through the student portal. So students have uh, if they go into Renaissance, then they have the option of taking. Uh, any assessments uh, that are assigned by their teachers through the Renaissance student tile uh, in the portal. Now, if you are in a one-way or DI class, then you take start early literacy in your language of instruction. So if you are in a one-way or DI, you would take start literacy in Spanish. If you're in, a, in an SEI or English only, then you would take start literacy in English. So there, there should be no requirement for them to take it in both unless there is an agreement at the school, for example, in a one-way class or in a DI class that they, wouldn't, that they would wanna take the, the assessment in English only, in English also for ELD purposes, but it is not a district requirement at this point. We want to have, use it as a tool for ELD, but it is not as an initial or baseline uh, metric. So they would take it in, based on their language of instruction. Thank you. Did, did that clarify, George? I, I believe it did. Um, the good thing about it, Dr. Rich, is you said that they can email you and you could provide them further clarity, so thank you. And, and the point is they have to have a conversation at their sites because while we have a calendar, they, there, some sites are uh, deciding additional metrics, so they have to have a conversation at the school about it uh, beyond what's on the calendar. And if there's need to be more specificity on the calendar, I'll be happy to provide that. Thank you. Um, this question might be for Dr. Redliff. I'm, I'm honestly not quite sure about the program, so I, I'm hoping this goes to you. But if not, we, we're, we've got a whole team here. Um, this question is asking about the raising a reader for low, lower grades. So if we already have raising a, a reader for lending books to lower grades, could we buy books for each student and just have them keep them at home instead of lending? For clarification, I think this teacher might be asking, referring to the $750 allotment for a lending library. Yes, thank you. Right, and because that comes from learning loss, um, I'll let Dr. Gomez um, finish that that question. But I do want to um, bring up raising a reader because Ms. Cordero is out um, contacting those of you that are using raising a reader that now that we're going to do some lending with books, she has a protocol and everything. And yes, for those that want to put in, remember the lending library is for books at the child's 
level as we're raising a reader are books that are above a child's level but they are to be interaction between a parent and a child and just giving some good structure on reading so helping parents understand that just reading to children is important for our family so two different purposes but um miss cordero and i have talked about how to um, combine the two and um, work it out so that you could put them both your lending library and the raising a reader in the bags to be sent and a protocol and as far as handing them out and picking them up but um, I don't know about keeping the book so that would be Dr. Gomez's expertise there. Uh, and yes, just to add to that, um, like like Dr. Ratliff was saying, it's two distinct purposes. And uh, the action identified within our learning continuity plan was for uh, a lending library so that students have a variety of books, uh, again, that belong to the district. So we do need those books back. And now it doesn't mean that we can't identify uh, alternate sources um, from at the site level from PTO or or other other sources that we can raise funds to buy books for students to um, to keep but for the purpose of this lending library we do uh, uh, want those books returned thank you dr. Gomez and dr. Ratliff for that um, so the next question has to do with um, report uh, sorry with parent teacher conference I think what they're asking is uh, it's, it's asked like do we have at this time any preview trailers of what the first parent conferences will look like. I think they just want to know what will be the protocol as to what will parent conferences look like that are coming up and what might, you know, what the plan is. Our stunned silence is very reassuring, I'm certain. Um, it's wait I, time, it's good. <laughs> right? We're, we're modeling wait time for you. Um, so Mrs. Onso couldn't be here today and not to not to pass this answer off to my boss, but um, I have a feeling that in part this is a Mrs. Onso question. And I also think that in part this might be a combined ed services with the sites question. Um, I think that uh, if I were to ballpark it uh, based on absolutely no preparation, then that would be a poor choice to do on the live stream. However, um, I think that something along the lines of how uh, back to school night ran is probably in order. Um, but again, I don't know that, uh, I don't remember that we in Ed Services have had that conversation yet. Uh, somebody please correct me if I'm wrong. And I definitely think that the principals have to be in on this uh, discussion. So um, I think the answer is, uh, no, Mr. Ortiz, we do not have any preview on what it will look like. So, um, George, do you have coming? Sorry, George, can you provide a little bit more uh, detail on what the question is actually asking? So, so that I'll read you the question directly. It says, "Do we have any time? Do we have any? Do we have at this time any in parentheses preview tra trailers of what the first parent conferences will look will be like?" I think they just. To me, I think this is just an interesting way of asking, you know, what is going to be the protocol, what our conference is going to look like. But this comes from Mr. Ortiz uh, at Bard, and it's a good job stumping them, Mr. Ortiz, uh, or getting them to think a little bit. But uh, that's all that I have right now, unless he writes in again, okay? So, so I think if I were to add, add on to what Josh said, I think it's important if I were to recommend that a grade level determines what is it that they would like to share with parents based on their collaborative work about the about the instruction that took place during trimester one from August uh, 5th to uh, the end of trimester October 29th? What information about, uh, about the student instruction and learning, about the student learning and the instruction that took place would they want to share with parents? Uh, we all, this is all new for all of us. So obviously we're all trying to figure out what protocol to follow. However, what, what are givens are related to the degree of engagement. So I would say, if anything, uh, there would need to be a conversation about the level of engagement that took place daily because teachers have been completing a weekly engagement record that acknowledges daily participation uh, synchronously and asynchronously. 
And I think if I am a teacher, I would want to discuss with my parents uh, uh, the variance uh, were, uh, or the criteria to obtain a uh, maximum credit for engagement uh, based on our on our records, which is uh, up to a three, uh, which would be thorough, uh, zero, one, two, three. So they have that information, I, I would say minimally, that would be something to, to offer. We can probably offer some guiding questions that we put together, but I agree with Josh that we probably can uh, extend the conversation with principals about what else to uh, ascertain with, with parents when that takes place. But from my point of view, I think it's critical for parents to have a conversation with teachers about the degree of engagement that has taken place from the first day of school through the end of trimester, October 29th. Thank you. Um, this is actually a clarification question about the report card. So Mr. Reigns from Steinbeck is asking for some clarification. And the question is, will, will we be using the pre-COVID AUSD report card for term one this year? Yes. So meaning that uh, uh, after we went, when we went into shelter in place, we had to eliminate the fields uh, and only open the comments uh, section for trimester three because we were not grading students during trimester three, but we are now, all those fields are back uh, to how they were pre-COVID. So they're open and they're available through the grade book, book links and open in general as they have been for the past three years through the uh, Illuminate report card. So this year four, year four. Uh -huh. Uh, thank you, Dr. H. Um, this one is with regards to Renaissance Place, and it's, uh, thank you, this comes from Loya. It says, where is the CPDs, uh, sorry, where are the CPDs for Renaissance Place? We are able to only see Lexile levels. Who, and I guess the question is, who decides whether they're viewing, you know, uh, AR level or CPD level? I think that's what it's uh, asking. So George, honestly, by the way the question is asked, that could have been a typo, and it could either, so what it actually reads is who decide which to use, and that could be how decide, how to decide which to use, or it could be who decides which to use. So there, there may be a typo or a misspelling in the second part of the question, which makes it a little unclear. Um, so again, where are the ZPDs from Renaissance Place? We are only able to see Lexi levels. How or who do you decide which to use? So there are a variety, variety of reports that you can access through Renaissance. And um, you have the option to select whether you want to report in Lexile or whether you want to report in a ZPD range, the star reading particularly. So it depends on the purpose. If your purpose is to report for AR, then you would want the report to give you the ZPD range so that you know the types of, the levels of books that students should be reading within. So say for example, a student needs to be reading between 2.0 and, and 3.0, then you want to have the star reading report shows you that range, show you that range. So then you have to, when you select the options as you are determining the options. And I sent out the, a uh, Zoom, uh, a recording from our last meeting with our Renaissance rep that I would want all to please preview the, that went out to all the administrators and the instructional coaches to please uh, share with teachers. And I indicated that on my email. Uh, it gives you the steps to uh, select whether you want to report it in Lexile or any other format, scale score or ZPD range. To start reading particularly, if you selected uh, for ZPD range, then the purpose would be for AR. If you select it for Lexile, is to determine the rigor of reading that students are able to handle in terms of, uh, in relation to what their uh, Lexile uh, goal is for the year. So uh, we, we measure Lexile in relation to, uh, um, for example, it's a metric that we use for reclassification. So we do monitor Lexiles and it's one of our main metrics. So we wanna make sure that our students build or lift that Lexile based on the rigor of reading that they uh, experience. 
So the teachers can opt to select how to report it. So it is, it, it is uh, your question, and uh, Josh asked whether it was a, uh, it was a how or, or, or who. Uh, the teacher can do both, can be the who and can be the how in terms of this. The teacher can be the person who determines it, and then it, is, it needs to be based on the purpose. But as a district, we want to make sure that we understand how students are lifting the legs out because we do include that in, in a variety of processes. Thank you. Um, this next question is for Dr. Gomez. Um, I'm, I'm hoping we can decipher, but if we are getting it incorrect, um, this is coming from Ms. Padilla at Sanchez. So feel free to write back in, Ms. Padilla, if we misunderstood. But the question is asking that, um, or it states that they, are, they were not able to attend to the record yourself reading the labels basic and troubleshooting. Who do I need to contact to get the support I need? And then they state that the question is for Dr. Gomez. Yes, thank you. Uh, we did have an ice station uh, regroup um, troubleshoot uh, meeting yesterday. Um, so just know that our coach, uh, Ms. Angelica, uh, she will be recording our step two or beyond day one to help you with uh, answer some of those questions. She should be sending that to me next week. Uh, what I will do, Ms. Padilla, if you send me an email, I can give you the contact uh, information for both um, Zach, our tech guy, and Angelica, our coach, um, so that you can contact them with uh, any information. But uh, I'm, I'd be uh, ha more than happy to talk to you about some of the highlights from yesterday's, uh, yesterday's PD. Thank you, Dr. Gomez. Um, this next one, I believe, is for you, Dr. H, and uh, it's from uh, Creekside. Um, it says it's an Illuminate question. I need to answer. I'm, th it's just, I'm, I'm thinking this is BPS T scores manually. I had tech problems, so did flashcards and spreadsheets. How do I manually post in Illuminate? OK, so what what I'm assuming the teacher administered the BPST uh, in a traditional fashion without it being live or electronic. Is that what I am understanding the question to be? So they need to basically go back and try and enter the results? Is that sorry, what? Dr. What was your question? So my point is, are you saying that they did not administer live, so they use a traditional method uh, and then uh, and then recorded it on paper and now they are just trying to determine how to put it into the system is that correct that's that's my understanding and uh you know uh, miss burns if you want to write in and clarify that would be great but yeah i believe that's what she's trying to do how do i manually post in a loop uh, or you know record them i believe but we'll is, see that, if is, that, he is that heather yeah miss burns yes heather burns. yeah i can i can check in with her later but uh, basically, they would just basically go through as if they're administering the test online, even if the kids are not there, and if the kids are not present, then use the results and, and type it in a one or a two, open the test as if they're testing the kids live, and then type a one or a two using the keys, the number keys, one for correct, two for incorrect, and it'll automatically uh, put it in the system for them. And they just need to type in, uh, uh, just take the test as if they were taking the, the student the test with the students. It would take about a minute per student. Thank you for that. You're welcome. We had a comment come in from Mr. Ortiz, who earlier asked us about parent conferences. And so just so you guys know that he, he wrote in, and we're listening, Mr. Ortiz, that his question was meant as an open-ended question. and. He's not about the gotcha questions, which wasn't his intent, and he thanks everybody for the support on the team. So thank you, everybody. Um, and let him know, let Javier know that we appreciate his feedback as well. Thank you. Um, let's see, the next question is from Ms. Mejia at Chavez um, regarding the STAR math test. Um, students were not able to take the test because there weren't enough licenses. 
have enough licenses been uh, bought by now? Yes, uh, it depends on when she tried to uh, access it. What we ha what happened was we obtained licenses for the district and the company assigned them equally, uh, not equitably, so equally to all schools, whether they had that enrollment or not. So then we do have an open pool now, so they should be able to access the licenses now. And if, uh, Ms. Mejia, uh, uh, are we talking about Angelica or Rosa? Jackie. 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 You didn't oh, Jack Yes. Mm, oh, sorry. One. No, but you said, I thought you said Loya, so you meant, uh, so you said Chavez. Yes. Chavez or Sanchez. And so many, Chavez. so many Mejias. It's like, come on. And a few of them were my teachers, my students, actually. I think four of them were my students. Anyway, in college, not just, uh, Elementary school, I'm not that old. Anyway, uh, so bottom line is the license is available. Uh, the licenses were originally uh, distributed uh, equally, not equitably. So all schools got the same, regardless of whether they needed that many. So now we have an open pool, so they should be able to access them. And if you're in a bilingual class, and that's why I was asking about whether it was Rosa or Angelica, uh, the bilingual teachers have a companion license. Uh, the students have a companion license so they can actually do the assessment in English or Spanish or in both as determined by the teacher. So for star math and star reading and star literacy. So uh, let me know if I need to follow up with Jackie, but let her know to check uh, if she still, if the students are still not able to access star math, let me know because we do have an open pool of licenses now. Originally, like I said, they had distributed them the same way with the same number and not not equitably. So just an FYI, Dr. Dr. H, there we shouldn't have to let them know because hopefully they're watching after they've asked a question. So so Mr. Ortiz, thank you. We heard you. Mrs. Jackie Mejia, thank you. You can reach out to, to Dr. H. Um, I was going to ask one more question um, that Thank we you, skipped Josh. by accident. Were you thinking, Josh, or I kind of jumped in? No, no, no. Go ahead. Yeah, and I was going to give my my typical. You know, there's no more questions after this one. So if you have any last minute questions, you know, you want to go ahead and send them in. So the question is, um, I believe this might be for Miss uh, Miss Anso, but you may know the answer to someone here. Uh, are we going to get a cheap three thousand training? I have zero idea about that. Do we have I, any plans to have training at ATC from Achieve 3000? I can't remember off the top of my head, honestly. Um, I was just in the spreadsheet before we started this, and I didn't see uh, any sessions around Achieve. Um, I could have sworn. I'm, I'm going to double check, but I feel like um, Carol and Kyle, I, I'm told, this is, I, man, I totally didn't like throwing them giving the assigning them a session but I, I i'm like so i feel like i like saw it um but that that was yeah. my initial thought you're right you're right say that louder what i'm sorry you're right what? Send what? You, oh what? I'm, sorry. I'm sorry i'm sorry in front of the entire district exactly. Ms. Garcia was right she's boom thank I you I appreciate it. and she thinks she's winning in any case um carol gonzalez and and uh kyle uh from uh, Fremont um, are going to have two different sessions at Al-Sal Tech Conference. Um, one is a beginner um, session and one is more intermediate and advanced. Um, I was also going to say, I think there are quite, so that's, you know, shout out to Carol and Kyle. Um, and yes, we do pair the ETLs so that their names begin with the same hard consonant sound because we think it sounds like <laughs> Cute, like Lamern and Shirley. Um, oh, but yeah. I think there are quite a few teachers who are skilled at LSL community in Achieve 3000. If you have any um, any colegas over there that you might want to reach out to. But yes, there will be two sessions featured on it at LSL Tech, Tech Conference.
sorry, Sally and I are sitting back here looking at each other. Um, so this one is uh, uh, Heather. We wanted to let you know that we got your uh, your clarification regarding um, regarding the BPST and Illuminate. Uh, can we sh we'll share that with Dr. H so that possibly he could go ahead and um, help you with that because I think it seems to be very specific as to what happened with her. So we'll pass it on to you, Dr. H or uh, Heather. Would you mind emailing Dr. H also? She can call me too. No worries. Thank you. So, so like yeah. George, I didn't necessarily want to jinx it by saying there being no further questions because I have a question. Because there are further questions, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to throw out a question to anybody who wants to answer it, but I'll call on somebody if no one volunteers. Question. What is something you're looking forward to? In what time frame? Is that is that Over a question for us as directors? Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Oh, for okay. the five people in here, something you're looking forward to over the weekend. I'm looking forward to the skies clearing. Yeah, pretty hazy. Distressed by this return to smoke. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to spending time with family. I'm looking forward to more questions for the next Q and A. No, just kidding. I'm looking forward to riding my bike uh, this weekend. I call it the bumblebee because it's yellow. I'm, but I won't send you a picture of it. I was looking forward to um, spending Saturday building the All Tech Conference schedule, and 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 then um, sometime this weekend, even though the air is currently poison again. Um, I'm going to take down, I'm going to put up all of my new Halloween lights because I went a little nuts at Lowe's this week. Uh, and that will necessitate me taking down all the old Halloween lights that I haven't taken down for a year, 90% uh, of which are no longer working. Oh, so I was just saying, I, I was I, just saying, I was just say add on. Yeah, but, but it's all if these they don't work, it, If they don't work, no. Yeah. It's a, it's a really good display. I've seen them before. Yeah, thank you. How about you, also, Delia? Just an FYI, if anybody wants to buy a full set of Christmas decorations, Lowe's has you covered. They've had you covered since the last week of September because it's ridiculous. <laughs> How about you, Dr. Gomez? Um, I'm looking forward to uh, just a relaxing weekend with family. I think we all know that our weeks uh, are pretty long and every day is is a new challenge given given the circumstances we're under. But, but I think as we move through this together, um, we'll we'll come out of it even stronger so i'm just again looking forward to just a couple of days to to disconnect so what about oh, you? you george and celia yeah oh man any baking uh -huh. celia she brought in custard tarts this morning that were pretty amazing well thank you for letting us know <laughs> oh that's <laughs> gosh <laughs> Actually, I was going to mention that as something I'm looking forward to. I'm actually looking forward to some more baking. I'm going to make um, a chocolate mousse cake with like a strawberry filling. So that's going to happen yeah. over the weekends. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. Just let us know when to meet you. For me, I, uh, I took the training wheels off my daughter's bike. So we're going to keep working on that. That'll be fun. Mm. And she's only five? She'll be... Five. Wow. That's awesome. So I don't know... And you, and you, Josh already said yeah, about the lights, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for indulging my question. I'm going to turn it over back to you guys to close us out. Okay, so so I don't know if that was Celia's way of stalling for and, and letting any last-minute Lupitas put in a question, but there were no last-minute Lupitas. So... Um, all that said, we thank you if you have stuck with us through this this far into the Ed Services show uh, with this week's special guest star, Dr. H, who, who had to field a lot of questions. So thank you very much, Dr. Hernandez, for um, for for all You're of that. You're welcome. Um, You're welcome. Anytime. Appreciate it. So as I said, as I mentioned, the Austell Technology Conference is coming up. It's on Monday, October 12th. 
Um, just an FYI, because I have gotten some questions on it. If you are currently reporting to site for work, that will still be fine for the tech conference. It's a regular work day. And as you can see there, that uh, sub submissions were due yesterday, October 1st. So of course, I've gotten several new submissions today. Um, and don't worry, they're, they're being accepted. We're not going to turn down any any volunteers. That's that's not how we roll here in EdTech. Um, I'm guilty. Um, One of those was mine. Yeah. So, um, and and we actually did see George on camera for a little bit today, but uh, we'll close out today the way we close out all of these, which is to say, be good to yourselves, be good to each other, and be good to our kids. We hope you have a fantastic weekend, and we will see you next Friday. Bye.